Was the B2 truly the first stealth flying wing? It's widely thought that the B2 Spirit was the first stealth flying wing of its kind, or did the Germans beat us to the punch by almost 40 years? When comparing these two planes, you get to see quite a few similarities along with quite a few differences. The outstanding similarity is that they are both flying wing designs, and this is where they really come together. You can clearly see that the Germans developed this aircraft 40 years before the B-2 even saw the light of day. You use the same concept designs that are now being used today. These designs include a swept back single wing, jet engine intakes at the very front, and a cockpit on the front and top area. Each one of these planes is designed to evade radar, and each one of them does it in about the same manner. Now which one of these two aircraft is the newest and the largest is pretty obvious here, which is the B-2, but each one of these things, which has developed almost 40 years apart from each other, played a huge role in how aircraft were designed from then on. The B-2 has a wingspan of almost 5 feet, whereas this little guy over here has a wingspan of only 1 foot. This thing is very small, it's very tiny but mighty. The underside of it is fairly simple, featuring some retracting landing gear towards the front and retracting landing gear towards the rear. These worked in a very simple manner. The landing gear on the B-2 work in a very similar manner, but of course are much beefier. Since there is no fuselage and tail on these models, each one was controlled by flaps on the ends of the wings that would go down in both in different directions. These flaps played a huge role in developing this plane and allowing it to turn much more easily with only being a flying wing. Some of these planes, like the B-2, also used the beaver tail sort of mechanism towards the back, or it allowed them to pivot this little thing up and down like this in order to be able to guide the aircraft. Similarly, each one of these aircraft has an engine exhaust outlet on the back towards the top of the back. Same as over here with the B-2 Spirit, top back. This allows it to disperse the heat more evenly and not be detected as easily. The cockpit of the B-2 is integrated into the body quite nicely, and this was done to make it as low as a profile to radar as it could be. We've got a very similar situation going on over here with the early World War II plane. As you can see that the fuselage and the tail sort of assembly, if there is one, is integrated very nicely into the wing, which gives it a very slick look of just being a flying wing. You may notice that even the engine intakes are jagged. This is to deflect radar. Something else you may notice that on these B-2s and Horton hosts, there is almost no symmetrical shapes. That's done because it needs to be able to deflect radar in the best way possible. And having symmetrical shapes and fuselages do actually show up on radar much, much more than just flat and non-symmetrical shapes. That's why you see things like this, like that, and even like that. The way that these aircraft are constructed is quite similar. They both use a center fuselage area, sort of flat thing, with the wings hinged out on the sides. This one over here has the wings sort of sandwiched into it, and you can see that it actually works out quite nicely. Though these two planes are almost 40 years apart, they share a lot of similarities. And that's all I really have for this video. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and as always, bye for now.